Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about cerebral infarction. Basically, our interest will be how to identify cerebral infarction on a CT scan. So infarction usually appears as a hypodense lesion and it's divided into acute, subacute and chronic. However, others divided into hyperacute, acute, subacute and chronic. Then it has a vascular territory. Then it has cortical distribution. So immediate infarction. So when there's infarction, what are the immediate signs you're going to see? So the earliest CT sign visible is a hyperdense segment of a vessel representing direct visualization of the intravascular thrombus or embolus. And as such, it's visible immediately. Although this can be seen in any vessel, it's most often observed in the middle cerebral artery. So let me show you that. This is it. This. Where the arrow is pointing. That's what we call the hyperdent segment of a vessel, right? Then early hyperacute. So within the first few hours, a number of signs are visible depending on the site of occlusion and the presence of collateral flow. So the early features include loss of gray-white matter differentiation and hypoattenuation of deep nuclei. Then this lentiform nucleus changes are seen as early as one hour after occlusion, which is visible in 75% of patients at three hours. Then this cortical hypodensity with associated parenchymal swelling would result in chiral effacement. So there'll be hypodensity, there'll be parenchymal swelling, and there'll be chiral effacement. And then cortex, which has poor collateral supply, is the one that's more vulnerable. And then visualization of loss of gray white matter differentiation is aided by the use of a stroke window, which is a narrow width and slightly lower center than routine brain window. So if you want to look at the loss of gray white matter differentiation, you need to go for the stroke window, okay? Not the brain window. So there'll be loss of gray white matter differentiation, there'll be cortical hypodensity, parenchymal swelling, and resultant chiral effacement. So hyperacute infarction, this infarction that has not yet developed, it's also called infarction and evolution. So there'll be a subtle hyperdensity and a subtle mass effect. Acute, so with time the hyperattenuation and swelling becomes more marked, resulting in a significant mass effect. So this, this, this is a major cause of secondary damage in large infarct. So acute, it occurs within 24 hours of onset of the event and it continues until after six weeks. Acute infarction, it causes a mass effect with ventricular compression as a result of edema. So here you're supposed to have ventricles, right? But because of the mass effect, you're unable to appreciate that. You're able to see that there's a midline shift as well. And another thing you need to take note is that edema is dark and infarction is dark. So you cannot distinguish edema and infarction in the acute phase because both of them are going to appear to be dark. So acute. So as time goes on, the swelling starts to subside and small amounts of cortical petechial hemorrhages that should not be confused with hemorrhagic transformation result in elevation of the attenuation of the cortex. So this is what we call the CT fogging phenomenon. So basically the swelling has subsided, is starting to subside. Then you get small amounts of cortical petechial hemorrhage. And remember when we talk about hemorrhage, hemorrhage appears to be hyperdense, so it's going to appear to be lighter. So people are going to confuse this with hemorrhagic transformation. That's what we call the CT fogging phenomena. So if you image a stroke at this time, it can be misleading because you can confuse it with hemorrhagic stroke when actually it was ischemic. Then subacute infarction it occurs about 24 hours after the event. So there will be a hyperdense lesion here. Yeah, you're able to see that. There will be no mass effect on ventricular system and no edema. So if you're able to see that the ventricles are still in place, there is no midline shift. But the only thing you can take note of is the hypodense lesion here. 
chronic. So let you steal the residual swelling passes and gliosisacy. Eventually appearing as a region of low density with negative mass effect. So in chronic, it's going to appear to be of low density and there'll be negative mass effect. Cortical mineralization can also sometimes be seen appearing hyperdense. So if you look at this here, yeah. so it's going to start from six weeks and it's characterized by repair process. So in chronic phase, the infarction is going to start liquefying and it's going to result into loss of volume in the infected area here. So remember it was hypodense, right? But it's going to start liquefying and it's going to lead to a result in loss of volume in the infected area. So the ventricle that's going to be adjacent to the infected area is going to dilate to compensate for the loss of volume. So what you need to take note is in chronic ischemia, there's ipsilateral ventricular dilation. So that's all about ischemia, ischemic or cerebral infarction. If you like the video, please like, subscribe and comment. Thank you.